it takes skill, it takes luck, it takes bottle and it's taking all over the world. Poker is a new beautiful game and everyone, everywhere wants a chip in a chair. Welcome to the PartyPoker.net World Open with a half a million dollar prize pool up for grabs. In our heat stages, the winner of each six-seater table goes through to the semi-final stages. And tonight, what an incredible heat we've got lined up for you with some of the game's liveliest characters. This should be a great one to watch, so sit back and enjoy. Over to our commentators, Jesse May and Kenna James. Hi, I'm Jesse May. Thrilled to be joined this evening by the cowboy himself, Kenna James. <laughs> Kenna, ah, wow. it's going to be a fantastic heat tonight. It really is, Jesse. Uh, thanks. It's, it's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to this match. It's going to be an exciting competition. We got some old uh, time rounders with Barry Hearn and uh, the names, you know, Tony G, you know, and some uh, young guns out there who aren't afraid to gamble it up. So it's really going to be an exciting match. Six seats here, only one seat open at that semi-final berth. Let's see who's in and where they're sitting. I'm Tony G. I started playing poker when I was 11 in Australia. Uh, I play a lot of tournaments all around the world. Uh, I'm the current European poker champion. I'm actually going out to have fun all the time. When I come to poker game these days, I just want to have fun, enjoy it, play really well. You can expect a win today, that's for sure. My name's Barry Hearn. Uh, we're playing in the east end of London. They call me the governor. This is my patch. Last 18 months have been good. Five final tables in the last seven television events. Confident mood. Today's some, some great players, but uh, if the cards go right, I'll take some beating. My name's David Gregory. Um, I've been playing poker for between 25, 30 years. Uh, mo most of the clubs. I played a few tournaments, I mainly play cash games. I don't fear anybody, I just play, play my normal game. And if it's my day, it's my day. My name is Stefan Rapp. I come from Linz, a small town in Austria. I'm a student, but I'm also a professional poker player. I started to play poker about five years ago. I'm not afraid because uh, I also know about my own skills and I think I still have a good chance to come to the same finals. I'm Kevin Dickow, 20 years old and uh, playing poker science one year. I never ever played a casino, so I only play online. Roy the Boy Brindley, professional poker player, four to five years experience. 15 ranking tournament wins the last four years, a couple of uh, tidy finishes, runner up in the World Heads Up Championship, third in the Grand Prix. I'm here to play. At the end of the day, poker's a gambling game, it's about money. I want the money because I want a better life. That's my ethic. Wow, what a lineup. Not much uh, room for us in the commentary booth here, Ken, with Tony G at the table. <laughs> Absolutely not. He's certainly not going to be short on words, uh, especially towards his opponent. Uh, he's very intimidating. Yeah, and you know he he's actually a very technically good player, but he mm -hmm. talks so much that people sometimes get thrown right. off their game. Well, psychology is a big point, you know, and a factor in this game, and he uses it to his advantage. One guy who will not be intimidated, though, Barry Hearn. Oh wow! I mean, what is his record in these? I mean, he, you know, this is his format, and uh, I think he invented the game, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get over to the game. There's cards in the air right now. Well, here we go. Just about time to shuffle up and deal. Players beginning this game with 100,000 each in chips. Those yellow chips you see are 1,000 each. The blues are 2,000 and the reds 5,000 apiece. And you won't go through to the semifinals until you get all the chips on the table. It'll be interesting to see 
can uh, how position plays out here. All those pros lined up in mm -hmm. a row. Wh who's got the edge there between Barry and Tony as far as position goes? Well, Barry Hearn is in the enviable position of being on Tony G's left, uh, which is, uh, I think, a, you know, a very advantageous to him. Pass. Straight in the first hand and Pass. take away Dave Gregory. Folding up shot. It's uh, lines of one in 2,000. And this yep. is a triple the bet from Roy the Boy from the button. Well, he's got a pocket pair. Pocket deuces or ducks as we call them. He's got position. He's got a pair. I like Re the bet. Re-raise announced from Tony G with the ace queen. He's got a big portion of his chips in already. Wow. Well, you know, he wants to, I, I think it's important to establish, you know, table presence right off the start. Tony has a, a big hand. And uh, especially from a raise from back position. Um, pass. And uh, sure enough, he, he, you know, uh, he's going to take it down right here. It was a very serious question he asked Roy there. And I guess Roy thinking the best he could be was 50-50. Yeah. Well, not only that, the problem with deuces, Jesse, is that 98% uh, of the time you're going to get three overcards on the flop. So it makes him difficult to play after the flop unless you flop a set. So first hand to Tony G. And uh, doesn't he look delighted with himself? Tony loves to dominate the table with the talk. You know something about that, Kenneth. I, I, well, I do. You know, psychology is a big uh, part of this game. And it's always nice to win that first hand. You know, it starts you off on the roller coaster going in the right direction. <coughs> and it announces your table presence to, the, to your opponents. Tony G won the pot and has the button here. And this is Kevin Dekoff. He's got a bit of a decision here with Race King 9 4, suited. Total. Pass. He's taking me on. Well, Decided to I'll raise play. with it. I guess the raise call. better than the Tony call there. The Absolutely. You know, if you're going to play it, raise with it. Now, Tony G with pocket call. deuces this time. Let's see how he plays. I want to see how you play. Yeah. 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 I want to see you up yeah. to 4,000. I think double the bet. Uh -huh. Tony G has called cold on the button. And, uh, it's Barry Hearn, who's also called from the small blind. David Gregory thinking he's just got so many pot odds. Right. Well, it's a common play to call and try and flop a set. You know, you, you know the, the way you double up and no limit hold them is set straights and flushes, and that's what they're trying to do here. Check, flop check. has come ace high. Right. It's hit check. really nobody other than uh, Dykoff, who's uh, flopped second pair. Then checked Tony G on the button. Check. Tony doesn't want to have a pop out. He thinks there's too many players in to put a steal in. Absolutely. You know, it, when you're in a multi-way hand, especially with a raised pot, and there's an ace and a king out there, you're just asking to be check raised if you, if you bet uh, the button. So he he's going to take the turn off for free and try and catch a set, but check. not this check. time as the four spades falls. Sixteen thousand in there. Is this pot up for grabs? Check. Well, it should be, and Dykoff okay. should, you know, he was the initial preflop raiser. I, I believe he should have made a bet here, uh, you know, and make a stab at the pot. Three. Well, Dykoff has checked all the way, the river pairing the board, but the kings and threes are still good, and now Barry yeah. Hearn reaching in. Well, I think it's too late at this point. Because, you know, there's a busted flush draw out there, so he's going to get called by second pair. <laughs> and he wisely checks. You know, he thought, he thought better of it. It's a bit of a threat bet from Barry, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it's not like Tony G might have used the verbal and uh, talked him out of betting there. I got so it's a showdown. Best hand will win the pot, and Dykoff will show his kings and take it down proudly. Well, it was the best hand after all seven cards were out. You'll need to know what beats what in poker, so let's check out the ranking of hands in Texas Hold'em. Every five-card poker hand falls into the official ranking of poker hands. At the bottom, high card only. Higher than that is one pair. Two pair is higher still, and then three of a kind, sometimes called a set. A straight is five cards in a row of any suits. Aces play high or low in straights, and a flush is five cards of the same suit in any order. A full house is three of a kind plus a pair. Four of a kind is what it says, and a straight flush is what you're looking for. That's five cards in a row, all the same suit. Tap yourself on the back if you get a royal flush. That's a straight flush, ace. So a few hands, and Kevin Dykoff is the chip leader with about 112,000. Not a huge mm -hmm. start. No, but he won that multi-way pot, and uh, you know that will garner some chips. Let's see what he does here. Under the gun, Dykoff. 2,000 to call more if he likes it. 
Well, it's not hard now to looks get a like this hand alone is testing his patience. <laughs> is that a bad sign? It, that's a bad sign. You know, uh, he did uh, <laughs> rightly lay it down. Uh, he was out of position there. Right. Um, Barry Hearn now with Queen Ten of Spades, Jesse. He's announced a raise. 8,000 total. Mm -hmm. He's betting his position. Cool. And uh, the raise is? Pass. Up to 8,000. All right. Quickly called by David Gregory, who's got a better queen here, Kenna. Yeah, he's got him dominated. Three and a half to one favorite before the flop. But, you know, some of that is taken away Check. when you consider position. Check. Well, Barry Hearn, the aggressor there, but he put the brakes on on mm -hmm. the flop, and has he given this pot up? I don't think so now, because uh, he took the free card and has picked up flop a four flush. He's, you know, if he makes a raise here, he's going to win the pot right here. Of course, uh, it's easier for us now that we see what's out there. Barry is counting out a raise. That spade on the turn uh -huh. gives him plenty of outs. And sure uh, does. A strong play by Barry, isn't it? Well, it's a nice semi-bluff, okay, because he's raised before the flop. Now it looks like he's, you know, uh, soft-checked an ace to his opponent, and he's semi-bluffing. He's got the outs to the spades. If his, opponent's if his opponent here, uh, uh, David, decides to look him up, well, this is a huge out for Barry Hearn. Little does he know that he made the best hand on the river. Check. Right. And with this pair, I think he'll probably elect to check it check. down, and he check. does. I got 10. Okay, fair 10. You know, and I think we thought he put in a raise there on, on okay. the turn, Jesse. He, did, he didn't. He did flat call to yeah. try and make the flush, yeah, the down which is down. also <laughs> a viable <laughs> play. I don't know, I was banging away on that one. It's always nice, though, for you guys to get the hand. Though. When you connect the 10, you feel all right. Yeah, but obviously. Yeah. Always hoping. The problem with raising yeah, there is if you get re-raised, no, right, nice okay, and bet yourself out of the pot, when you have the flush draw, you're just sick, you know. So it's a fine line whether to uh, call and uh, try and make your hand or uh, raise and try and pick up the pot there. Pass. Button belonging to take away Dave, but it's Tony G who's raised the pot up. Mm -hmm. 6,000 with the two three. <coughs> and Rap has just called here. Well, this... You know, this is the second time we've seen a raise with the small pair and back with the ace queen in the blind. What accident the few don't fall over the line. I guess Rap could have played that either way. Why do you think he's uh, he's called? Just wants to look at the flop. I'm looking scared of Tony G, maybe. Well, yeah, you know, Tony G is such an aggressive player. You know, he wants to. Maybe he's trying to trap him here and uh, let Tony G's aggression work against him. Check to the razor and a big. Feeler bet from Tony G. 10, well, you can 000. see Tony G really hesitated before he put chips in the pot there. <laughs> he, he flung it out like it was a cookie. Are you kidding? 10,000 right to you. What are you going to do? I mean, Tony's the kind of guy who's going to keep pushing until he gets pushed back, isn't he? That's a good point, Jesse. You know, Tony knows aptly that most flops miss most players. And he uses that his position to an advantage to take down the pot here. Once you saw two come out. So rap. First time on the TV table. And you knew I had a luck on it. <laughs> Barry <laughs> making fun uh, with Tony G, saying once a, a deuce was there, it was his pot. <laughs> I had no ways. I have two cards that are the same. You know, the great thing about Tony G is he doesn't actually need anybody else to carry on a conversation with. He's, he's happy to just carry on one himself. <laughs> he's his own Charlie McCarthy. Pass. Tony Pass. G's a great guy, though, you know. He, he catches a lot of flack Pass. for being a trash talker, but off the table, I'll Race tell you, he, he really is a, a, a sweetheart of a guy. I mean, he'll needle you about your play, but it's Pass. never personal, is it? No. It's, it's, a lot of it is show, you know. Tough on the outside. Soft interior. Rap has well, raised a blind small steel. blind, and Roy the Boy Bentley has steel? called him uh, 6,000 uh, apiece. Mm -hmm. it's so much. It's well, it was more. You know, when your <laughs> head's up and it's you're in the blinds, steel. King High <laughs> is uh, a very reasonable hand to play. Me, actually, Rap is on the button, and Roy the Boy oh, leading yep. out here with middle pair. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a good play. You know, you flopped a pair. Like I said, most players miss most flops, so when you flop middle pair, you know, and your head's up, it's good to make a lead bet and define Pass. your hand. 
Well, I guess the, the stacks aren't big right, enough, yeah. uh, so if Roy checks ra check raises on that flop, it's gonna really cost him. Yeah, mm -hmm. good point. Well, they've played five hands already, and wouldn't you know, Tony G has won two, but it's Barry Hearn with the chip lead. And uh, what do you think of it so far? Well, I, it, it's playing out uh, so far according to Hoyle. You know, Barry Hearn and Tony G, the experience, uh, um, you know, leading the uh, younger competition. All according to form so far, but still early days, just the first level, kind of. Anything can happen when there's cards involved, and that's where the excitement lies. Everything can change at the turn of a card. And usually does. Yes. Button on Kevin Dykoff, Barry Hearn, first to speak here. The older statesman. Who's going to attack me? That's what I was going to Action it's around now one brave to Dykoff. Pass. Oh. That's the same as an attack, isn't cool. it? Oh, that's no, uh, right, I check it. And Roy yeah. the Since boy my just friends, I'm not going to push my luck. Tony G's big blind. G, <laughs> happy to get a pass. <laughs> he does. He says, I don't want to push my luck. I wouldn't either with 3-4 off suit. <laughs> Wow. All right, pair now, the board. Okay. Now, Tony G's flopped a gut shot straight. Brindley was trapping with top pair. Tony's going to be check, check. Yeah, Roy's going to be check. sick One if the five comes. Wow, I've what is Brindley so doing here? Checking top pair twice, very vulnerable. That's your two. <laughs> wow. 2,000. <laughs> what are you doing I guess here? He's a bit. Hit right in the middle of that. I had three, four. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Tony's folded already. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, Roy could only lose money there if the... Right, right. You know, I don't mind uh, checking the flop to such an aggressive player uh, well like done. Tony G, you know, to keep him in line later in the match. But when you give up two free cards, you're just asking for trouble. He didn't find it there, though. He found the pot. It's and, amazing uh, how things like that can backfire yeah, on you sooner or later, huh? Yeah. You know, in today's poker game, game, it's so wildly yeah. aggressive. I don't believe in slow playing. You know, I'm going to bet uh, whether I have something or not, uh, get money in the pot and try and win the pot as, as quickly as possible. Against the brilliant Roy the Boy. <laughs> Tony G going to work on Roy the Boy already. He doesn't waste any Pass. time. Uh, Pass. If you let Tony G have an inch, he'll walk all over you. Oh, well, look, look. if uh, Dykoff was thinking about Jack 8, he's definitely going to play A7 of spades, and he certainly does. He brings it in for a raise, Jesse, back position. 6,000. Triple the bet, standard raise right now. Mm -hmm. I'll let you guys fight it out. You're leaving me, man. I'll leave you. Jesus. I like the raise. Sometimes I like to go in between three and four and go three and a half. Now, look at this. Barry Hearn has the same suit, King 8 of spades. I'm out. Hopefully for him, spades do not come. Do you think Barry Hearn's peeling off a flop here because he has Dykoff targeted a little bit? Or uh, is it just... Is Maybe it he's defending his blind here. Whatever he's doing, he's flop top pair. Check. He's going to have Dykoff following it. Dykoff with the continuation bet. It's standard. You know, you've raised before the flop, an ace or a king flops. You're going to make the continuation bet and... Try and uh, define your hand and uh, take the pot away from your opponent. Raise. Raise. Barry Hearn announcing raise here. And uh, how much is he going to want to stick in? Well, I like to stick in about three to four times, you know, my opponent's bet. The pot size is 21,000. I would expect him to bet somewhere near that. Another 10. 10,000 more, 18 total. Yep. Just a little shy of that. Which isn't bad because, you know, his kicker is a little weak. And that's, you, you know, you only want to bet enough to get the job done. Which at this point, his job is to win the pot, I think, is his objective here. Not to, to draw a call in. Will Dykoff listen to this message? He does. He does. Hearn taking the pot there. He defended your blind. I, I mean, I where do you draw the line between what hands you defend with and what hands you don't? Your opponents, you know, which opponent you're against, and uh, their um, hand frequency. You know, you have to, you have to uh, defend your blinds at a certain point so that uh, you're not getting picked on all the time. But certainly, you want to defend with some kind of a holder. And Barry Hearn sending out a message early there. Don't pick on me. And then I will look at And not many people do, Jesse. 
if I play my hands right, then what happens, happens. Uh, but we do have a table full of aggressive players. Tony G can talk you to death. Roy the boy can bore you to death. So, you know, all of these kids can play a bit. But as I said, they're on my patch. Let's see, let's see what they can do when the pressure's on them. And I'm going to put plenty of pressure on them. Barry Hearn, early chip leader, and it's hardly surprising considering he's made quite a name for himself at this format. But with Tony G and Roy the Boy sitting at your table, you can hardly get complacent. We're back with more after the break. Half a million dollars is in the kitty for the PartyPoker.net World Open, and 200,000 of that will be going to the winner. With some of the best players from around the globe riffling their chips and checking out their cards, this tournament is one for the big boys. I know when you raise, you never pass. You never like passing once you've raised. It's just a mind game, Tony. Are you trying to put something in my mind? Aha! Uh -huh. There he is. Barry Hearn is on to Tony G. He said it's a mind game. You're trying to get into my mind. Stay out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought it was enviable that he was on his left, but maybe it's not enviable that he's next to him and in his ear. <laughs> I wish he had some cotton for that. Tony G raising on the button with the nine five of clubs. Well, I'm good enough. I'm, I'm it was only like a minimum world. raise. Two became four. And Dave Gregory peeling yeah. off the flop. With the seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well that shows part. you what his thoughts are. You know, to Tony G's uh, <coughs> hand selection. He's right, isn't he? He certainly is in this case. Wow. <coughs> nice okay. flop for Tony G. Top pair. Mm -hmm. And once again, look at how quick Tony G uh, bets. You know whether the flop hits him or not. Last time we saw, you know, he did have uh, the two threes, <laughs> but uh, that's not much of a hand, and he fired out 10,000. You can choose the, with the nine. What an action one table. <laughs> you can choose the nine. This is an old Amarillo slim one trick. Pick, pick one card and one yeah. card only. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You're an absolute talent. I know I can You are a talent. I came in earlier. <laughs> Tony G, believe me, is happy that he picked the nine. He's showing him, listen, I do have a hand, you know. So next time that he can bet with nothing. People always choose the cards. It's unbelievable. I might pick players out just to needle them. So if ever it might be Devilfish or someone like that, if they're on my table, I'll start needling them very nicely, gently, and uh, see if they can get upset dump their chips off, uh, but it's, uh, that would be the only reason to pick people out. I'm not picking people out thinking, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think he's weak. But time will tell, at the table, I will get a feeling for everyone's abilities and how everyone reacts to certain situations, and I'll try to exploit that. Well, I've never had anyone miss the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Dave was actually too committed to that part right, to get involved with <laughs> I thought he might have played a really, really big spot. Seems to be yeah, the does, tightest player at the table right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think he has a strategy of just shutting yeah. down shop for the first two levels and watching the action? Well, you know, I like I like that strategy. I like, you know, sitting back the first level and seeing, you know, what's going on with your opponents, what kind of hands they're playing. You know? Now look at Barry just calling on the button. 6,000 more, eight total. Uh, David Four. Gregory Pass. getting very active, mm -hmm. small blind, trying to take the pot here and now. Right. You know, well, when you limp on the button, <laughs> you're either slow playing or you're showing weakness. You and David friends, Gregory read it for weakness this time. He decided to put some heat on the pot and try and pick it up right <laughs> here. I mean, is the problem for Gregory that he's going to be out of position all through this hand? It's a great point, absolutely. Very interesting flop. Ten. Barry Ten Hearn thousand. with two over cards and a gut shot straight draw. An 8, 10, or jack improves his hand. I don't ex expect him to go away, but he does. He does fold his hand instead of testing his opponent. He's been drastically unlucky on TV, and I think he's really excited to break through and get that first mm -hmm. big win. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he's the one that seems to me is stepping out there and gambling it up and trying to go out after that win. Here's uh, Barry Hearn with royalty, uh, oh. or, or near royalty with the Jack Queen. Two face cards worth a 
I think it's just a call for Barry. This is <laughs> well, the second time no. he's limped in. Look at S Stefan Rapp here with oh, pocket threes. This is the oh, hand yeah. of the day. Pocket ducks and and, and pocket threes. Oh, those are big chips there. Which is known as crabs, by the way. Oh, yeah, crab so salad. Okay. <laughs> crab salad. Okay, you're gonna <laughs> Dykoff with his off. favorite hand, King Nine. He had that earlier. He's gonna, that he's gonna play again. Up. Hmm? You've got to put them all at the same down, time. Then you, drew you can't do that. Six. You can't well, do that. You can't just drop them to okay, the mm -hmm. so, no, uh, one more. He's an one internet drop. qualifier, no, no. and just, he put the chips in two motions. It's a string back call. Well, that's the disadvantage of being an internet qualifier in a live game is you're not used to handling the chips. You're used to handling a mouse. Right? So your fingers are used to clicking a mouse and not gathering chips. So they're at a little bit of a disadvantage here uh, if they don't if they're not up to speed on all the rules. He showed strength. That's a great point. He would have been in more trouble if he would have raised because he would have reopened the bed inferior hand. This hand right I'll just now finds a way. <laughs> Only David Gregory has set the cards in. And G's going to get a free flop. <laughs> we all want you to win Which is why he was yelling yeah, friends, about that rule. He wanted a free I'm flop. I'm not sure that you do with 4-9. Right, right. What if he flops two nines here? He's going to be in horrible shape. Let's and so this is a case check. of beware of what you ask for. You okay. might just get it. Check from Roy over to... Tony. Four has hit Tony G, and he's wow. got actually. He does flop the Check. best hand with four nine. Four. I don't expect it to hold up. Now this is a time where when you do flop second pair, you do not want to bet because you're in a multi-way field with 5, a lot of players seeing the flop, and it's very reasonable that somebody has a seven. So yeah, it's tough to bet. Forget about pair. Stefan Rapp. He's actually got three threes. Oh, I did see. You're Pass. right, Jesse. I'm sorry that I overlooked that. There were so many people in the yeah, hand, so I overlooked it. <laughs> you better He's believe. Yeah. Trips. You better believe <laughs> Stefan saw the three. <laughs> He's frozen to the table and is just stuck in a 5,000 feeler. It's close a race. Close God, he'd love some action and next right time right now. He sure would. You yourself said slow Pass. playing is part of the old school, Pass. but here, right. Right. that 5,000 bet from right. Stefan Rapp chased everyone. Is he going to be a bit disappointed? He is, you can see uh, there is a little disappointment in his in his face, Jesse. But you know, uh, he he shouldn't be really. You know, there's nothing wrong with putting a bet out there. You've got five players. I know there's not much to the flop, but come on. I mean, nobody's going to take a stand at him. Tell him the captain, and I can also help. Rap's got that sorrowful look. Saying, need two to make a big flop. Come to me, so you can find that. Global challenge we did in Vegas, did you? Tony like captain the rest of the world the against America. He got knocked out very early, as, you, as normal. But he went for about 10 hours. Has to play with Barry Hearn is talking at him. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times when guys are in the big blind, they tend to talk to everybody. Yeah. 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 Just trying to distract them. Yeah, it's a good point, you know. Yeah, they do, you know. Uh, they don't want action. They want they want to see a flop for free and not have to phase uh, a raise, which usually they do. Take it, Barry, just take it. I want to be too embarrassed and this, to be This time, Tony G shows the respect for Barry Hearn and just gives it up without even a fight. <laughs> <laughs> That'll change my life. It's all friendly now, you know. It's one in two thousand blinds. Everybody's got a hundred thousand in chips or thereabouts. It's all friendly banter, chat. Oh, take it, take it, take. It. Believe me, it's gonna change too when it gets up to you know ten and twenty thousand dollar blinds. It's gonna be. Don't raise my blind. What are you doing? I re-raise you. Still six at this table. Still the first level. And uh, Roy the boy Brindley there. He's yet to play a hand. He's got ninety nine thousand. I mean, he's not himself that You know, if you notice something interesting about the table, all the chatter is coming from. Oh, oh, let me just stop that thought. Is is uh, I think it's Roy. It's Roy just uh, walked up with, waked up, woke up with pocket kings. Yeah, he found the cowboys. No, no, I'm in the spot. Six thousand to go. Quickly called by David Gregory in the big blind. Look at this defense. Nine five of spades. Wow. And he's flopped a four Check. flush. I told Check. you, David Gregory is out to make something happen in this tournament. And he doesn't care if he's against, you Check. know, pocket Check. kings, pocket aces. He's going to try and win with the nine five of spades. Here's the river. 
Roy the boy put the brakes on completely oh, wow. there, Kevin. Well, I understand that. You know, the biggest thing you fear with two kings is an ace, and it comes off, you know, a third of the time. Not more. Everyone was waiting. Three cards for your flush, huh? Waiting for a flush. You know, Roy the boy had so the bet. Gregory might have tried to make a floor. play on it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Flush draw turned to straight draw. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was yeah. the best yeah. result okay, for both you. players there. Okay, David no? Gregory flopped not you. only a flush draw, but he turned a bet shot. Straight draw. His aggressive yeah. tendencies, yeah. Oh, I mean, if Roy <laughs> had even <laughs> sniffed at that pot, he might have put pressure <laughs> on him. And, and uh, you know, and Roy could have lost that pot. Now to put on a flush draw. As it is, yeah. he took down a small does, pot, which is, uh, you know, I'm sure he's happy to do with an ace out there with pocket kings. Ridley playing the part of the snail, no. but it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so far, the here's Dykhoff with the ace. But well, we know he, we know he sneezed at Jack eight. So Whoa. here he's got an ace. Ray, he's gonna play. Five thousand titles. Like these young guys, Canada, <laughs> they love every hand, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> and they never, they, they don't see a hand they don't like. Ace five. I like the raise. Two and a half times the blind. It's an early position. You know, you, you make your opponents like Barry Hearn right here think about. Well, what does he really have? Cool. And I like this call by Barry oh. Hearn. In back position, you have a deceptive hand. You know, to fold now. you're either going to probably lose a small amount, amount or win a big pot. Oh. Hearn has enough chips to try and win a big pot. Hard to fold hand. Mm -hmm. Oh. Now, conversely, no, I do no not like Stephen Rapp's call. <laughs> Stephen Rapp's call with the jack of three. Uh, uh, even though it's suited, uh, too tough to make a hand with that uh, holding. Well, the original Razor, Dykhoff, has just wow. flopped three Check. fives. And, and all of a sudden, he looks like now. a genius coming in <laughs> with a raise with the ace five. <laughs> what should he do here? Well... You know, I think uh, I, I, I would check it here and see what the action is behind. This is this is a flop that's hit you so hard, and you've already raised under the gun that you're going to chase out your competition. And when you flop a hand this big okay. and you get lucky, you really want some action. And I don't believe he's going to get it here, and uh, I think betting was a mistake. Bet of 8,000, Dykoff just praying for action. But yeah. nobody's got nothing to make a play. No, I think those five. prayers are going to go an five. unanswered. Show us the five. Unanswered. Tony G says, show us the five. That was the last time at this level. The new blinds will be two and four nice. thousand. What was the other one? We're going to change our deal. Five, eight. And <laughs> <bad>. Marty <laughs> Wilson so chiming in that the blinds are going up. That means the pressure's going to increase. The action's going to increase. You don't yeah. say raise. So end well. of the first then level. Yeah. Looking at the leaderboard. Barry Hearn on top, but uh, he's only got 15,000 more than he started with. Looks like David Gregory in trouble right now, Kenneth James, only 74,000. Yep. Still plenty of chips to work with, though. The blinds are only going to be two and 4,000. Second yeah. level now. Two and 4,000, double the blinds. Is this going to provide any change in tactics? Absolutely. As the blinds increase, the pressure on the opponent's stacks okay. increase. And we've already seen action in the first round. I expect it to even double in this Let's round. dance. Of these six Second players, dance. Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> Tony G saying, let's dance. Get up and dance. He always has fun when he's playing. That's why it's great. Look at it, Tony G and Barry Hearn here. They're great ambassadors for the game. Tony, they really you are, are, you know. And you gotta have fun. It's, Thank it's, you, you know, you gotta remember at the heart of it, it is a game. Come on, Even though we're playing for a lot, a lot of money, <laughs> and the stakes are serious. At the heart of it all, it is just a game. Tony G has made it a total of nine thousand, and Hearn has picked up the big slick behind, and doesn't seem really sure which way to go. Cool. It's one of the top hands. Pass. Pass. He elects to just flat call Tony, Pass. and I don't mind that play against Tony G because he's so aggressive that, you go. know, it's you a, have to me. sometimes slow him down <laughs> by showing him the best hand. What'll happen if they both... I'm sorry I had to call. <laughs> That'll be very interesting <laughs> to find out, Jess. It's actually hit Tony G pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And... Check. Tony now setting up Barry. Uh, check. Check, both checked. Tony's tricky and Hearn <laughs> doesn't fall for it. If it comes an ace or a king. It does not. 
And Tony G, once again, I expect him to, to not uh, give Barry another free 10, card, 000. and he doesn't. Nice. He flips those $10,000 right. bets like... You know, like they're nothing. Hearn's Ray's announced Ray's. More. It's 10,000 for Tony more. G. No, sorry. 15 more. And Barry Hearn has made it 15,000 right. more. Well, you're, you're seeing now a battle within a battle, okay? Cold. They, uh, oh. Barry Hearn is not playing his hand. He's playing them. Tony G. That's a dance. Has Tony thrown him off because of the check on the flop? I think so. There's the river. Wow. A horrible check. card for Barry Hearn. Well, there's 74,000 in this pot, Kenny. Right. Barry Hearn has checked it. Could he afford to? Mm hmm. I, you know, in retrospect, looking at uh, Barry's bet on go. the turn, or the raise on the turn, <laughs> rather, it's also he's taking off the free card on the river. In case Tony is bluffing, he gets the free look down. Put the in the case pot Tony's there. bluffing, Barry, we, win huh? the, we win the hand with ace high. So her just trying to see the end of that hand. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Tony G. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. going yeah. to make yeah. him chip a leader. Over 150,000. Still a nice move. If the eight had come out, you might have really had a bite of it because the board would have been really scary. Big enough for the two of them. Yes. The king or ace had come out, might have had a little bite of it. The best accessory you can have at the poker table with Tony G about is a set of earplugs. This guy knows how to matter and just loves throwing off his opponents with his incessant chat. And worse than that, he can walk the walk as well as he talks the talk. He's where he wants to be, the table captain. Everything counts. Experience, talent, there's all little edges, but it still doesn't mean you're going to win. It means that you've got a good chance. You could be the favourite going in, and uh, definitely I'm the favourite going into the heat, but whether I'm going to win, time will tell. I'm definitely going to try my best to win. Welcome back. There was no way that this table was going to sit back. It's been all go from the first hand. It's clear they're all of the same opinion. Winning is all that matters. Coming second gets you nothing. Back to the table. From the stars on the wall to the stars on the table. Jesse, here we go. I just hand felt two of the second <laughs> level. I just felt players, I mean, I really six did. players you've seen here. Anyone who thinks needs to change Race. the game? I like players. I have uh, yes, I do. I think uh, David needs to, to step back this guy, level and, uh, you know, <laughs> sure, you let things develop a little more. Cool. He uh, giving it away now. Yeah. puts himself in precarious so positions. But this mm -hmm. time you don't want to step back. Not when you hold the ladies, <laughs> two queens. Raise. Well, there's been a raise and a call already, That's and Gregory so sitting funny. with those queens has announced re raise. <laughs> How I too much. <laughs> Another 15. Yeah. 15. Race another 15 nice. Well, this is a hand that Pass. plays better heads up, so I do like the re-raise. How much is it? It's 20. And he does have <laughs> position. A total Pass. of 21,000. Only 15,000 right now on Tony G. Only 15,000. That's 10% of his <laughs> stack, and he's the chip leader. Oh, oh and no. Barry Hearn taking a, well. taking a stand with the two sixes. I thought you were going to do that if I could. All in, yeah. I, I, quicker five, seven, than he announces all five, in, Gregory seven, says, I call. Right. And Barry Hearn instantly two knows two that he has a got a problems here. 18%. Right. <laughs> oh. The two words you hate to hear as a poker player is, I call when you move into the pot that quickly because you know you that you're in big trouble. And here he is, you know, uh, four, four, four to four and a half to one dog going into the flop. Well, it's David Gregg, we're all in, but with a much stronger hand. Mm -hmm. And this. unless Hearn catches a six well. here, can uh, it doesn't matter. That doesn't it's just going to be <laughs> devastating to him. He needs a six on the turn or the river. You just want, don't want another club. I now. don't want to see a six at club. You don't want to see a I've club. got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do about the flush talk. Why did I raise this? could be a Nine huge boon for takeaway David. A little nervous added chatter added as we go to the turn. Oh, that was close. No help. <laughs> it's an eight. Any six in the deck. Two cards, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's all but resigned to have lost his hand standing up, praying for mercy on the river. <laughs> Barry standing, but actually, I, I don't think he can be knocked out this hand. Again. He's going to have six or seven thousand left no matter what. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's an eight. Thanks, Matt. Cheers. And David Gregory, he has knocked Some out the elder statesman yeah. Barry Hearn, a great ambassador, I mean, as you said, no, Jesse, no, to this game. Well, yeah, they'll have a sure. quick Six, count of the pot. It, Barry Hearn might actually be covered here, and if he is, then he'll be walking. 
it might not have been but, uh, Such a great yeah. record in these mm. events, but uh, 100% her and just took a, an opinion, I guess, there, Kenna. And, um, well, you know, in, in fairness to uh, oh, Barry's yeah. judgment here, uh, as I had said right before this hand, David Gregory, his hand frequency is now, that he's is been playing an awful now, lot of hands. So Barry Hearn probably assessed oh, that he you. could not <laughs> withstand the heat <laughs> of an all-in move, 9, uh, figuring that he was out there dancing around I'm once again, but he like wasn't this time. He had the goods. That's good. My blush. Well, that thwack that you heard, the sound of my chin hitting the floor, kind of <laughs> uncharacteristic of Barry Hearn. Well, you know, this is what happens when you're against unpredictable players who play a lot of hands. Their hand frequency is such that you know, you don't think they have a hand, and, and at some point you have to take a stand. And Barry Hearn decided, I'm going to take a stand early with a pocket pair and thinking that his opponent can't withstand the re-raise. But, you know, aptly, you know, it didn't work out. Uh, and it's a shame because Barry Hearn, such a colorful character, it's a shame to lose him so early. Hearn not out, but 7,000. He's all in on the big blind or just over off the big blind. And... It's pretty much just pray from here. Right. Well, you never know. You know, you can get lucky. Uh, I've won a tournament where I was down to uh, actually three chips before, so it can be done. <laughs> um, let's send it back to him and uh, and see what happens. <laughs> David Gregory, <laughs> that big that. smile. He has plenty of chips. The big Long double up. Right. Chip leader with 163,000. Your chip leads change again and Barry Hearn has gone from hero to zero to a stack of just 7,000. He's not one to throw in a towel, but turning this one round could make one of the greatest poker comebacks yet. Can the governor pull off an incredible revival? It's going to be such a secret. Uh, Only the people at home. Gregory, a man on a mission, but eyes yep. right now on Barry Hearn, who's already announced eight. all in, in mm -hmm. the blind. <laughs> Well, not much else it, really. brave well he's not he's not in the blind, he's under the gun. But he'd rather put his chips in rather than be blinded out, as they say, and uh, put his opponents at a decision, which is very easy for Stefan Rapp waking up with two jacks here, Jesse. In this situation though, can it should Rapp call or raise? I think you have to raise, you know. It's you're just asking for trouble when you draw the blinds in and you've got somebody else in. You know, an overcard is, is most likely to flop, and and then you've given up uh, a pot that you uh, could have won. Pass. Well, I could raise him out and ask the White House. Good odds call. <laughs> I don't think you can uh, raise him out, uh, and that would probably be a bad play. Uh, Mr. G. Show me. Monster. So Rap will get a few Stop chips monster. back, but Stop. Barry Hearn is all in with Jack's one over here. Yeah. Over card and the hearts. Just give me one over card. Oh, there he is. He's asking for the one over card. Yeah. Give me a chance. You've got the magic hand here. <laughs> King Come Deuce, on. the high low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it is her and all in. Rap saying, hold these jacks. Ooh. It's the king we love, wow. baby. <laughs> Barry does flop the king. No queen. He no has queen. to avoid the queen, which no will queen. make Stefan wrap the straight or a jack, queen of which would, would make him trip. I have a queen. This, I this one is <laughs> 20,000. He could, you know, uh, two double yeah, ups, and uh, uh, believe me, you're right back no into it. Just like I said, yeah. you know, you never know what's going to happen at the turn of a card. And go to the river, he needs to avoid a jack or a queen. It is. Oh, I love you, baby. We're still in this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was From easy. hating you to love you, <laughs> Mr. Hearn <laughs> says he doubles up, more than doubles up, actually, because he gets the uh, <laughs> he gets the blinds as well. Never in doubt. Barry Hearn, such a good guy. Huh? Mm -hmm. Anglo-German relations has never been so good. I love Austrian. that he, he, you know, he has <laughs> fun. Austro-German. Was it Ferdinand? German is here. The Germans there. Was it Ferdinand that was shot that precipitated World War One? Okay, now we're going to take a break from poker and have a history lesson here uh, by Mr. Hearn. And uh, I think Hearn intimating that rap could end up like Ferdinand if he keeps, if he keeps, if he keeps, if he keeps raising Barry. Uh, Barry threatening he's going to go all in again, I think. There's a German pincher. German has 4,000, 20,000. And look at Dijkhoff uh, now so doing his impression of, uh, of David Gregory, you know, playing a lot of hands now with the 9-5 of spades, I guess because it's suited. He, he decided he's got a hand, huh? 
Dykoff's a fast Dykoff. player. I've got to have a little peek at that. Fast? Yeah, have a little peek. Too That's busy. like I I normally I would speed of light. light. But for you, I'm going to have a peek. Cool. <laughs> Little does Hearn realize what good shape he's in right now. Right. Well, Barry sees a king. Oh, and he's flopped a pair. Again, it's middle pair. I think Barry should bet right out here and try and win the pot. Ooh. All in. That is what he's done. A six would make Dykoff a straight. Does he want to pay for it? Excellent play. Excellent play by Barry Hearn. He's he's weaving his way back into this match. I cannot imagine that Dykoff is going to call this bet. That's cost him twelve thousand to win thirty. Not I don't, He's got a seven. I don't think so. Catch up, no good. You I've know, got the, you've got the king high. I've got the king high. It's all I needed. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is yeah, true. <laughs> but he had I'm a little bit more. We're going to slow play anything. I can't afford to slow play. And with that there. pot, Barry Hearn nice up to like eight, thirty thousand. All of a sudden, he's stacking, and that's the wonderful thing about this game. How quickly things change, but mm -hmm. Hearn, he's won five pots. The most. He's the lowest there. Wow. Barry, is, it, is it in the five to one? Or is still like any other here. players. You know, I came e equal out. You know, that's just the, come out that is the fun and interesting in thing about this game, Jesse, is how is quickly fortunes can turn. I'm rehab. I'm rehab. You know, and that's Fully why they rehab. call it this No is, Limit Hold'em. This is not the poker den, this is the priory. <laughs> what did he say? Pass. It's been raised up to 11,000 total. Raised from Roy the boy. Pass. Pass. Not a bit down in starting hand requirements. Look after your chips. Well, he's going to try and turn it up here as he brings it in with the raise, as you said, with the 9, 10 of clubs. Four plus seven, 11,000 straight. And uh, respect there for Roy the Boy. Well, I don't know if it was as much respect as it was a lack of uh, card holdings from everybody else at the table. But either way, he takes down the blinds. Look at how Roy the boy stacks those chips. Things, Anybody yeah. who spent that much Finch time getting those in line <laughs> isn't playing very many hands, are they? Exactly. Well, <laughs> it, it, it is a um, tell, so to speak, that he is a tight player, as if we didn't already know with his suit and tie. <laughs> Seems like he's got an appointment as his accountant. Uh -huh. <clears throat> nice tie, though. Look at the tie. He's got, the, he's got all the suits there. Well, Roy's a gambler through and Pass. through. <laughs> And, uh, to 12 total. Well, now Roy's got a real hand. Does it look more Pass. deceptive when a player is raising the second Pass. hand in a row? Yes, it does. Thanks. But cool. by the third hand, actually, you know, it, supposedly, um, the hands are supposed to get stronger with each with each raise. You know, Roy is the type of player that really doesn't need wow. to show cards Thanks. because he's already cool, communicating a tight image. Like so, yeah. actually, you want to do the opposite <laughs> of, of what your image is. No one knows my game. I don't know my game. It all depends on the day, how you feel, the circumstances involved, the run of cards you get in. If you've had a row with the wife the night before or whatever, uh, who knows how it's going to pan out today. You tried that yeah, minute, Greg. Like that. That. Pale, pale green <laughs> shirt. Something to do with a pair of green shoes. It was just, it was just. Is that pale green? Oh. It's maybe more lime. It lime like green. It, lime green. It that looks is like it. a That's Sherpa it. ice cream cone, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> and, and, and and the the two uh, um, experienced pros in black. Black is power. Well, Hearn folded a hand or two, but now first one in and finding the ace, he's straight Indeed, all in. Back. Is this an overbet, Ken, or is this Barry Hearn's only move? Well, yeah, I don't think he could make a, a traditional raise here and afford to be re-raised out of the pot, so I like this move of moving all in Barry, yeah, with what well, figures to be the Try best the hand. Mm, 28,000, and it's a pretty serious question asked of David Gregory. Right. Well, the problem for David Gregory here is he has a reasonable hand, and he has so many chips, he's not going to know what to do with them, so he's going to put them in the pot, try and get lucky, and bust Barry Hearn right here, I think. I think that's okay. what he's thinking. Cool. Good man. Could be 62. That's exactly what Good he's man. done. Like everybody else folds, there's not going to be any more Pass. play left in this Pass. hand, besides Pass. what the... Well, now, King Jack... Show. Kenna James, this is my uh, favorite hand, <laughs> but it is a slight underdog here to Barry Hearn, uh, about three to two favorite going into the flop. 
Oh, so, Gregory playing KJ. I would like to see an Elf come out here. Yep. Very much nice. Why not? But he is all in. So if Herring can make this hand hold up. Not that, not wow. That and so far, so good, Jesse. I'm telling you, if Barry Hearn doubles up here, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, you talk about being from Dunkirk to back again. Hearn was basically an afterthought in 7,000. Now, now he becomes a presence. Oh, With only one more card to dodge, he has to dodge a king or a jack. Sweet. <laughs> there it is, the river. Yes! It's a four and he's done it! Well done. Wow! I'm delighted for you, nice. The comeback kid. He has, but he's made his own Don't luck in a way, hasn't he? Well, exactly, you know, he's, he doesn't give up, you know. He doesn't give up, you know. He, that, that's what I love about Barry Hearn. No, no, no. That's why he's won so many. He doesn't give up. He had a few chips left. He knew the best spot to put him in, you know, not to be blinded out. He waited a couple hands till he had an ace, blind, eh? and boom. You can never say never in poker, and Barry Hearn's not one to give up without a fight. He's clawing himself back into this one. Let's hear from our commentators, Jesse May and Kenna James. Well, it ain't over until the last chip is in the pot and moved. How about that push by Hearn? Well, I, I like it. You know, he picked up the ace, one off the button. It figures to be the best hand. You know, he needed to make a move, and he did it. And he's given himself a chance to get right back into this match and win it. And believe me, he's got a good shot now. What can Baza do from here? Let's get back to the table and find out. Well, it, was, it feels so confident. Well, that, if anyone was super hard, I could have tried it out of it yeah, for, for a long time. So still while. six left. Thought we were down to five for a second there, Kenna. But uh, Barry Hearn has put himself in a position yeah. where a double up would give him chip lead. Pass. <laughs> you know, Pass. fortunes can quickly change and no limit Pass. hold them. And you're seeing it right here in the case of Barry Hearn. Pass. Couldn't possibly blind Pass. on blind, Roy the Boy and Tony G. Oh, and Tony. Roy, 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 Roy uh, Brindley, uh, has eight. Jack 8. Right and on. with the Rockets, Tony G. The first time we've seen them tonight. That's right. And uh, interestingly Check. enough, <laughs> it's against Roy Brindley. Yeah. I mean, Tony Check. G's made a pretty big dog. raise of 8,000 there. Roy's mm -hmm. peeled off the flop out of position. Oh my goodness, this is going to be trouble Check. for Roy Brindley. He's flopped top pair. Right. Pretty much the worst possible situation Roy could be in. Absolutely, of, uh, absolutely. And it looks like he's looking to check raise Tony here. Raise it up. Re raised. That's exactly what's happened. Bet by Tony G, raised by Roy. And uh, has Roy got too many chips in here to get away from the sand? Well, um, against Tony G, I'm probably going to say yes because, 15, and it's you know, been re it's re hard. To uh, Tony G plays a psychological game and, and nobody G ever thinks he has a hand. Let's see what he's got. We'll take the 45. So Roy the boy paying the penalty right now. Absolutely. And 45. Okay. Well, you know, it's not as no, much as a no, penalty no, as it no. is an unfortunate so series yeah. of yeah. events. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's not way out of line uh, against a player like Tony G taking a flop with the jack eight. But when you flop top pair and your opponent has an over pair, you're asking for trouble. This pot got so big, so 70, fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roy the boy. Had a tough, tough decision here. I think he's okay, got he's about 40,000 You know, there. You, at this point, you have to think, okay, what can my opponent have? He has to beat a jack. Unless the only hand he can really beat is a flush draw. If Tony G we'll is bluffing, a here. you know, on a four <laughs> flush, you know, <laughs> he can't think tangle. his jack <laughs> with no kicker is good here. Little dance. If he thinks control, logically. <laughs> so he's got to think that either Tony G is on a pure bluff or he's semi-bluffing with spades to make this call. Roy counting out how much he has left if he folds. And do you think he has enough chips there, Kenna? to play his way out of it. Absolutely. Here. We saw Barry Hearn with no chips left come back. You know, certainly this is enough chips to get away from this hand. And especially if you think back and think logically in the hand, what can I beat? Tough decision. What can my opponent be raising me here that I can beat? It looks like, to me, he's staring at at least over pair, if not three sevens. He should be able to get away from this I'm hand. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
You know, especially a conservative player like Roy Brindley is, I'd be shocked if he calls this bet. One thing Roy the boy can do is make good decisions. Can he pull that folding trigger here? He's got to deny that voice that's in his head that's saying he's bluffing me. You know, there's a there's ego involved here. Now he's he's put on the clock and the pressure of the clock has uh, you know um, put him to the call. I am shocked here, Jesse, that he's made this call. He has called, and the face from Roy the boy saying, uh-oh, I'm in it. Mm -hmm. But there are two cards to come, and Roy does have outs. Yes, he does. Two, one of two jacks remaining, or one of three eights, which would make him two pair. Just a little bit. The winner of this pot is going to have 216,000. Looking like seven. Tony G now. Yeah, absolutely. That takes the eights away. Now, one of only two jacks will save uh, Brindley here. Otherwise, Tony G is going to eliminate him. Roy needs a river. The river card, it's a nine. Roy the boy there, out in sixth. Thanks. Boy, he looked like he was going so well, Ken. He really was. He was playing a cautious game, and uh, he just ran into the Rockets. Roy the boy, Brindley, struggling with his confidence, struggling with his form, and struggling with his game. This isn't the time to face Tony G, not when he's got pocket rockets. He's with Jesse and Kenna now. Well, down to five now, and Ken and I here with Roy the boy, Brindley. Roy... Mm -hmm. It seemed to all be going according to plan, and then what happened? You know, to sound playing badly would be economical with the truth right now, you know. <laughs> I, the, the ultimate decision was I was kind of juiced in for, for the price and the value. To run into aces on the big blinds is a bit unfortunate, but I just never caught the race pre-flop, and then I've hit a bit of it. And By the time he's got the final bet in, you yeah. know, I've got 50,000 chips left. I'm, I'm three to one against if I call. I'm hoping he's on a flush draw with an overcard, so I'm right. even money. And I'm, I was, uh, you know, it's Tony G. Right, you know, right. he can have any two cards in his hand. So I think I chose to put him on a, a flush draw, or a couple of overcards, more so than. A, but I was also aware that he knew I was committed. Yeah. So, uh, so then I'm thinking, well, okay, maybe I'm drawing to five outs here, but the, you know, twenty percent chart. I, I kind of talked myself into calling. Um, I'm starting to realise these things that quite often you can't afford to lay cards down, lay hands down. Sometimes you need to get lucky. And, and the worst case scenario was he had me dominated, which he did, and I had to get lucky, and I didn't. But mm. all in all, I don't think I'm playing very well. Best of luck, Roy. Always a pleasure to watch you play. But they're down to five now on that feature table. Who's it going to be? Tony G, maybe. Tony G, a dangerous player. Tony G with chips lethal. Kenna, how do the other players have to change their game now to uh, react to Tony G's lead? Well, they can't uh, bow down to uh, what's certainly going to become a tyranny. Uh, you know, with Tony G in the chip lead, this is where he's most comfortable. And now he, now he picks up the hands to boot. <laughs> He and said, Barry Hearn, quick oh, call, drawing time. a line in the he's sand, gone. but uh, right. ace nine usually pretty good in that head-up situation, but Hearn a bit unlucky Tony here. Kind of. Very I'm unlucky, you know, I just said well, you had to take know. a stand, no, and, and Barry this. Hearn does it. it wouldn't matter. I was gonna go just uh, else. unfortunate to uh, walk into a bigger kicker no, here. Nice. So immediately back, Sometimes and Barry Hearn now yeah, all in. This pot's 124,000, but Hearn needing a nine. A nine or a lot of big cards to hope for a split. But now Tony G even has the flush draw. Wow. The odds are getting slimmer for Barry Hearn. A club would end it. Oh, it's a nine. <laughs> Come on, my goodness. No club, no ace, no team. Now it is Tony G on the short hand. How quickly fortunes can turn as we go to the river. Low spade, low spade, low spade. Ten. Oh, oh, it's a oh, ten! Oh, well played, son. It came out of the I was so excited. Wow. No. You know, that no. is the drama of this oh, game. It sucks you He's in, the ten and then and boom. Lovely. Thank you, gentlemen. In the turn of a card, it snuffs Cheers, you out. Pal. Cheers, boys. Get the you magic. Get it, take it away. away. Uh -huh. And uh, the deck has taken oh, out of Barry Hearn now. We're down to four so quick. And great news for Tony G. At one stage down to 7,000, Barry Hearn looked like he would make the comeback of TV poker dreams. 
that Tony G is unstoppable at this table tonight and the governor is out. Oh man, that's so close. So I mean, this game is so frustrating and so great. It's what makes it so exciting. You know, I probably made a much too aggressive call on the pair of sixes, which did the big damage to my stack. And 7,000, I was going fishing. You know, that was the end of my day. And uh, you know, I probably got lucky and built up. And of course, if the nines had held up in the last hand, I'm up to about 130,000. I'm really back in with the squeeze, but that was a good run. And the old phrase, a chip in a chair, you know, it's so true. People do sometimes, you know, they get down to a very short stack, they give up. And there's no need, because if you get lucky, if you can have, you know, some control over when you push your chips in, don't just do it, you know, willy-nilly, then you can come back in this game. And I nearly, that would have been one of the, to win that table from where I was would have been one of the great TV programs and poker games of all time. And, and I wasn't that far away, but hey, that's like, and uh, you know, Tony G's gonna be tough to beat now. Tony G, an unstoppable force of nature, storming through the field. He's loud, he's brash, he's a bully. He's rattled this table to its core, and now he's collecting their chips. Who's going to stop this man? Well, not only does Tony G have half the chips yeah. in play, he's seen off his two biggest rivals. How yeah. strong is he right now? Very strong. I mean, Tony G is a tough competitor in the best of times when the chips are even. When he has, you know, twice the chips as anybody else at the table, going to be very, very tough to beat. Uh, his opponents are going to be climbing Mount Everest, but it has been climbed before, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we're in for a, a battle. Domination on the cards. There's four left. Let's check out the action. David Gregory holding his jaw like he has a toothache. Kind of, I mean, things were going very well for yeah. David Gregory. He's really done nothing wrong, and look what no. he's got to face now. Well, you know, David Gregory started out as the aggressor, and uh, Tony G Pass. has just usurped <laughs> that role. <laughs> There's only one big blind this hand. That's Pass. because Barry Hearn went out in the big blind last hand, so it's G. And again, look at He picks up royalty, king-queen. All right, after all, we are in uh, the royalty, uh, the country of royalty. Blinds are three and six thousand, and Tony has a whole stack Raised of red there. To Thirteen thousand total. But uh, he's just four. raised it eight thousand more. Mm -hmm. I think at this point he is looking four. for action, and he gets his wish as uh, David, David Gregory will look him up with the queen three of spades. Yeah, Gregory doesn't know he's dominated, but wow. How often have we seen this tonight, Jesse, where the kicker, uh, you know, the, the, the opponent with the, the lower kicker flops his pair? And unlike Roy the boy with his pair, can a Gregory leading out with the threes. Is he going right. to find out what he wants to know? Pass. I think so. He just did. Tony G folds and uh, David okay, Gregory uh, takes small small down the pot. Case. Little bracelet there of gold for David Gregory, but more importantly, he's got some chips. And he's got some luck on his side. I don't I don't think he realizes how lucky he got in that hand. <laughs> Tony G, not going to dump any chips when he's behind. He's got the button now. Blinds come around quick four-handed. And three and six thousand. I mean, uh, these blinds are pretty serious. Right, and they're going to only increase from here. That's the great thing about tournament <coughs> poker is the blinds increase, the pressure increases, the opponents are forced to decisions, pairs are big at this point, and as you can see, Kevin Walk wakes up with a pair of eights. Yeah, Dykoff will like those. He's fiddling with the reds. Those are 5,000 each. Raised and, uh, to 15,000. 15,000 is six plus nine, fair bet. Mm -hmm. Very fair bet. Two and a half times the Pass. blind. Um, you know, it, it's going to uh, put your opponents at a little decision and, and also wonder, as you can see David does here, what can he possibly have? Is it a bit of a halfway hand or is it automatic play? Uh, with the eights? With the ace-jack now for Gregory. Oh, with the ace-jack? Uh, no, I think it's a, big, uh, a bit of a thought, you know. Um, I think it is uh, at least a call, Pass. if not a re-raise. David Gregory has decided to peek at the flop. This pot now, 36,000 in there. And this is interesting. Right, all clubs. And David Gregory with the nut flush draw now I'm all in. should be able to win all this in. pot. Well, he's gone all in straight away. Right. How's Dykoff going to feel? 
Well, he, he's got to be nauseous, you know. Um, it's very tough to put your opponent on flopping a flush. And, uh, but he doesn't really have too much to make a stand with here. I mean, looking at the percentages, if Dykoff does call, it'll be a straight race, Kenna. <laughs> but uh, this will be this will be a wire to wire. <laughs> He folded. I mean, is that yep. just the power of getting your chips in first? Yeah, you know, actually, you steal position. Even though David Gregory was out of position, because he was first to act after the flop, he actually steals position from his opponent. Yeah, over in Europe, we call that Irish position, the first <laughs> chance to bluff. <laughs> <laughs> and Gregory uh, showing some good <laughs> flair for that. Well, right he there. is wearing green. <laughs> so he, he, he may have some Irish in him, even though it doesn't look like it. So Gregory, well, he's been pretty flawless tonight, hasn't he? He's got the button now. Well, you know, when you're hitting flops, you know, he is dancing out there. He's dancing between Pass. raindrops, as they say. Pass. Fold it around to the blinds. And Stefan Rapp. Pass. Just folding coolly. I can't have the ace. Mm -hmm. Take that pot down. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I mean, I know the blinds are three and six thousand, but the average chip stack, one hundred and fifty thousand, uh, and Stefan Rapp, the short stack with about sixty-five, he's got over ten big blinds. Uh, is he in trouble or? Well, I, I think he feels like he's in trouble. You know, whether you are in trouble or how you feel are two different things, and a lot of this game is played on emotion, uh, you know, and, and your feelings. Even though uh, people talk about poker face and mathematics. You know, this is a game played with people. It's a card game played with people. And, uh, you know, those Pass. those feelings find their way out in action. And uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, fold, fold, small blind for Dykoff. Jack oh. 10 suited, just calling. Jeez, they Okay. Hold. Well, he's right. respecting Tony G's chip stack. You know, it's very intimidating when you look Beautiful. over and you see those Whoa. tall stacks of color facing you. Uh, flop has helped neither player, though Dykoff mm -hmm. does have a straight draw. Should he be leading out here? I don't think so. He hasn't raised before the flop. You know, Tony G will snuff out a bluff, uh, you know, quicker than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Faster than I might s Check. smell out a cheeseburger, Tony uh, G <laughs> will smell out a bluff and probably take it away from I him. Checked. But because he checks, you know, Tony G will show him respect and check behind him. Here's the turn card. King would have been a lovely card for Dyke Golf, but he's still leading with the jack high. Mm -hmm. Check. Now, Tony G, I'm I surprised check. he doesn't use his chip position and his position on the table to uh, pick up this pot. He certainly could have done it on the turn there, but now that the river has come, you know, uh, he's looks like he's given this pot up. I guess Dyke Golf would be happy check. to check it down. He is. Check. G check. saying, you take it if you can beat an eight. And the jack this plays. Nuts. He'll be surprised that he's going to win this pot. And that pot was played very weak by Tony G. Does uh, Tony want some free information? Does he want to know what kind of hands Dykoff is playing? I think that may be the first hand Dykoff has had to turn over. Yeah, but I think, you know, when you have chip position and you have position on the table, you have to use it. Nine thousand out there. Does Tony G want it? Raised to fifteen thousand. Yep. Well, Tony G, as you can see Pass. now, is playing hands. He's he he he's resting on Pass. his chip stack, waiting for the cards to come. He's getting plenty of hands, so that may be why he he's elected not to take those marginal shots with the weaker hands. That is nine thousand more total of fifteen, and Dykoff suited. Straightening, Pass. not interested. Nope. And you see where uh, Dykoff stepped out game. early now has yeah. gone back into his shell. I wanted to play and all in the game. Kenna, does the fact that there's only one person going win. through second place worth nothing I'm on this table, should that affect how these players play? It absolutely should help uh, affect how they play, Jesse. You should be playing lights out, most, all you know, kill or be TV. killed. There's I'm only the one winner. But tell me the stats, right? it out the other day. You have to play like there's no tomorrow. And that's where I believe Tony G cannot let up. He cannot rest on his laurels. He's got to keep the pressure up, you know. 
back <laughs> off in the small blind here. He's, he's, he's laughing at his fate. Every hand he looks at down is like 10 deuce, 10 six, you know, five deuce. I raise. Raise. Oh, and once again, Tony G with ace queen. All in. <laughs> Tony's been a human <laughs> card rack so far yeah, this evening. Yeah, make it easy for you. Well, it's not easy when you don't have the cards to play. I'll tell you, it's it's painful when you look at these hands Pass. time and time again, and, you, and you begin play. to you begin to wonder, you know, what am I gonna get? When am I gonna get dealt a hand? What what I can like I play? Doing a lot of all ins, small time. <laughs> small <scale. laughs> Not really. Right right scale scale everywhere. Sometimes See, you and, just take four thousand. It's nice. <laughs> You and this is, see, look at, you don't get exposed. That's right, because Tony is now <laughs> really exposing a very loose image, even though we know by looking at his cards that he's playing solid poker. I mean, everything about Tony's an illusion, isn't it? Right. It is, right. it is. It's great. See, Tony is one of these guys that I was saying early that plays the opposite of his appearance. He appears very loose, 18, but he actually plays, you know, good solid poker. Re -raise, raise announced from Stefan Rapp, but the re-raise from the ace king on Dykoff. Pass. A bit unfortunate for Rapp. King eight Pass. is the best hand he's seen in a while. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he, he hasn't had much to work with. Can he afford to let this hand go? Well, you know, it's tough because he looks, if he glares over to his right, he sees these, you know, these towers of chips, and he might just think that he has to gamble here, but you never, you know, you always have a choice. $49,000 more. $49,000 more, you know, to Stefan Rapp. I think he's got to conserve his chips and think, well, if I double up twice, I'll have 240000 right? Rap thinking like it's not automatic. He is dominated here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, I'm not sure. It feels like you're on the hand. <laughs> <man's loose. laughs> A little shorter breath, licking the lips. Very tough decision. Easy for us to say here in the studio, but believe me, when you're out there and you're facing that raise for all your chips, all the emotions are going through you. It's tough to think logically. Raps folded. Oh, I mean, yes. It Good takes a lot, a lot of confidence right. in your game to fold there, doesn't it? it you know, and, and you got to keep your ego in check, you know, and uh, so much. You got to swallow you your pride. Have big rise, you have to remember that this game is won, not, you know, you got to be able to see the forest through no the trees. You can lose no. the battle, but still win the war. I and, did. uh,. That's what Stefan Rapp uh, hopefully did it for his case there. So Rapp cut a little bit, but he's still breathing, though bleeding, and he's in the big blind <laughs> now for 6,000. <laughs> yeah, so not only do you lose a hand, but now you can pick up the big blind. <laughs> Going very well for Dykoff, though, who's still stacking from the last hand. Mm -hmm. Action on him for 6,000. <laughs> Off in there with a puncher's chance, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like that, a puncher's chance. Tony G, does he, he does he get, get Delta a card under a 10? <laughs> Not tonight, King 10. There's another raise, small blind wow. from Tony G, and Gregory's got a re-raising hand. Wow. And and David Gregory has seen his fair share of hands tonight too, so it's it's no coincidence that these two are, are the chip leaders at the table. They've been being dealt the hands. Re-raise. Now he's putting it to Tony G on the re-raise. Yeah, how big is this re-raise going to be? Looks like about 30. 30 more. 30,000 30, more in the face Pass. of Tony G. Total Tony G calls 46. here. He will have position on Gregory. Right. Yep, and Tony oh. G does call. If there is a weakness in Tony G's game, it is the play before the flop calling raises with inferior hands. Action will be on Gregory. He's hit hard. Wow. Top two. Oh. Check. Oh, oh, that's oh my goodness. Gregory's trapped him. He trapped him, and Tony G fell right in the pit. Oh, man, look, you see, he shakes it. He just, Bad and, it, and against the second okay. chip leader, you know, you cannot do that. That all happened so fast, Kenna, and Tony wow. G down to a jack now. Gregory's got two pair. Tony G praying for a jack on the turn of the river. Mm. 
The turn is a king. Up. He's got two extra outs now. Any jack, any king, anything else. To the Gregory, river. This, yeah. it, this is a very big swing here in this match. Gregory can barely move. Oh, it's a jack! <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness! That is incredible. I if I didn't have the out. David Gregory has been one of the unluckiest men in televised poker. That form oh, continues. What a hand he played. Wow. I mean, lucky. He better change the color of that shirt because green is certainly not lucky for him. That was absolutely incredible. He played the hand perfect. This he had Tony G now. on the chopping block. Good hood, and and Tony G took the axe the out of his hand <laughs> and just chopped him to pieces. David Gregory's last hand. He flopped two pair. Tony G got the chips in. Gregory had but to call. The jack, though, on the river. Broadway straight for Tony G and seeing off a very dangerous rival and bringing us three way. That's the story of my life, I'm afraid. Absolutely had him strangled. Miracle card. It's happened to me before. It happened again, I should say. Well, not only is Tony G good, he's lucky as well, Kenny. Wow, a tough combination. <laughs> you know, I like to say against my opponents, if I don't have the best hand, I usually make it very tough, uh, you know, strategy to win against, and uh, Tony G used it right here. Is there anything takeaway Dave should take away from that hand, or was it just a case of playing perfect and being... <laughs> Brutally well, unlucky. Well, he, he better not take anything away. He better leave it behind because <laughs> whatever he walked in with, you know, uh, certainly didn't, uh, Lady Luck didn't shine with him there because he played that hand perfectly and uh, just uh, the result didn't go his way. 474,000. Should we write out the uh, seat name for the, for the semifinal <laughs> for Tony G or what do the other players have to do? Not quite yet. As we know in No Limit Hold'em, fortunes can change at the turn of a card. We just saw it. So uh, even though he is a heavy favorite, the underdog sometimes wins. Can anyone stop Tony G? Tony G kind of busy telling the other players what their chances are right now. <laughs> well, their chances are about what his chances were in that last hand, but he came out on top. So. Need a little help from the deck. We'll see, yep. <laughs> All in. All in announced from Stefan Rapp. This is actually the first big hand he's seen tonight. Right. Um, look at this. Dykoff. Dykoff has the exact same hand. Wow. Well, except we've got clubs. Yeah. So if you give me, give me four of those. This is going to be a battle of suits since they have uh, the same hand. I guess about 98% of the time this hand is a split pot this right. race. Right. <laughs> But uh, you'd rather have the ace king of clubs than the ace king of suit. Not favorite. <laughs> yeah, I lost <laughs> this uh, particular hand the same season. way <laughs> in <laughs> Amsterdam in the championship event uh, when I had the ace king off suit. And, uh, and uh, the gentleman made a flush on me. So I've been on the short end of this stick, uh, stick rather. Well, it can be a bitter pill to swallow, but with that flop, it's only Dykoff free rolling now to club right. club. Unless it's a club on the turn, it will be a split pot. <laughs> Very unlucky. <laughs> no. Oh, I had a straight. Straight. straight comes on the board anyway. You know, and talking about Tony G's last uh, <laughs> crucial hand in which he, uh, you know, uh, knocked David out, it's not the mistake in Hold'em usually that uh, sets you back. It's that one mistake compounds another one. Like you said, you know, the call of the re-raise before the flop. Betty's. And uh, Betty. then all of a sudden he he suddenly moves in, you know, uh, against uh, you know his opponent who's flopped top two, and his mistake is compounded. Sometimes though, because there's luck involved in this game, mistakes uh, you know turn out to be uh, <laughs> masked. <laughs> there's the rub, isn't it? I there's the rub, matey. <laughs> So we're three-way. You're either the button or the blinds when it's I might have made a mistake uh, describing that. <laughs> <laughs> a series of events. Well, Stefan Rob is on the button here. He's got 32,000. And, and he's Hold moved in with the 10 high. Mm. Is this just uh, t tactical? Yeah, it's just totally uh, chip uh, tactics, not wanting to be blinded out of the yes, tournament. He's obviously got a, an easy call by Dyke off here with the pocket Pass. jacks. This time I'm, I'm not a favorite. 
And uh, a bit unlucky for Rap here. As soon as Dykoff called, he knows he's in trouble. This is really bad trouble. This is real bad. No, no worse than uh, the spot that Tony G found himself in, though. He's got about an 11% chance to uh, win this pot. Strange things can happen, but it'll have to be runner runner from here. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid the writing is on the wall. And now, yep, that'll be it. He is drawing dead going to the river. Nothing really went right for Stefan Rapp tonight. Are you still there? A meaningless 10 on the river sends Stefan Rapp to the rail. So Stefan Rapp out in third. Now, Kenna, he pushed the panic button, pushing the panic button. <laughs> I mean, so tough in Hold'em, isn't it? Oh, he, he went out there on a wing and a prayer with the old 10-5. You know, uh, Doyle Brunson uh, won two World Series with the 10-deuce. They now call it uh, Doyle Brunson. But, you know, um, I, I think Stefan Rapp uh, could have waited for the big blind and, and, and saw a better hand. Head up now, Kevin Dykoff looking around. There's nobody there but Tony G. Wow. What, what has his strategy got to be? Wow, it's got to be run and hide. <laughs> but there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. He's forced to sit there. Um, you know, but anything can happen. Tony G's got one free shot at him, which means that, you know, he can call or push him all in. And if the cards don't go his way, he's still going to have a chip lead. So take that shot to take out your opponent and uh, put the pressure on him, and hopefully you can whittle him down to where he's not a danger. We'll be head up between an internet qualifier and one of the most dangerous mouths in the game. Let's see if Kevin Dykoff can take on Tony G. Back after this. Roy the Boy Brindley, Barry Hearn and Dave Gregory all devoured by the big man from Australia, Tony G. He's in tremendous form, he's just ploughed through this table and now it's only the 20 year old online qualifier from Germany left standing. I fear this will end in tears. A great wall of power. Those are the arsenals of the player known as Tony G. He's very dangerous, very tough and can be loud. He'll be taking on young Kevin Dykoff. Out chipped, out manned, out gunned. This is what you dream about when you're sitting at home in front of your computer. Can, a, can Dykoff pull this off? Well, the one thing Dykoff has got going for him is he's got nothing to lose. Okay, Tony G is expected to win. He's got the chip lead. Dykoff, if he could just realize, I've got nothing to lose here and just let it all hang out. You know, Lady Luck might shine on him, and he might just come through and give Tony G more than he could bargain for. It's a real David and Goliath situation, and Dykoff mm -hmm. will be looking to throw that pebble <laughs> into <laughs> G's <laughs> Dykoff has got the slingshot. Okay, You're looking really up at Tony G. Anyway. I mean, getting this far. does Dykoff want to play flops or commit early? 15. I think he wants to Race, commit early. He can't afford to take uh, flops against Tony G. He's got to continually pe put Tony G at a decision by moving all in and forcing him to gamble. Pass. But Dykoff has brought out his weapon, the dark sunglasses. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, it's not the sunglasses that are going to do it. It's those elbows moving those chips into the <laughs> pot, my friend. Anything above a queen I would be moving if I was Dykoff and putting uh, Tony forcing him to gamble because that's not what Tony wants to do. Tony at this point wants to chip away at his opponent, chip away and get him lower and lower and less and less of a threat. Dykoff, small blind is the button. He'll act first before Always. the flop and then Race. last in subsequent betting 18, rounds. And this is good 12. aggressive play. Yep. Call. Three times the blind. Tony G calls. Tony peeling off the flop with a very pretty hand, though jack ahead right now. Mm -hmm. Even though that's a pretty hand, it usually doesn't play well heads up. Check. Dykoff does flop a pair. I would not give Tony G a, a chance to get lucky here, as we saw that he's done. When he, when he gets all five cards across the board there, he's very tough to beat. I would move in and shut him out right here. 20,000. I mean, pretty much, does Dykoff just have to think if Tony G has a king, good luck to him? Well, 
Yes, of, exactly right, which is you're not going to call, you're going to call a re-raise, so make a big bet here and just shut your opponent out, and that's uh, actually what he did. Like off taking that pot down. That gives him a little confidence. Well, I mean, uh, Dykoff in a situation right now, he is uh, out chipped, but uh, the way things go in No Limit Hold'em, Dykoff is really what did you have? only two pots away from winning this thing. That's Doubling up twice, he's, he's got them all. That's a good point, Jesse. And he has to realize that. And he al you also Grace, have to realize what your opponent, and when you get heads up, it Nine becomes cold. even more of a psychological warfare. You have to realize what your opponent is trying to do and take it away from him. G raising to 15,000 with the five high. Dykoff has him strangled. He sure does. And this is the type of a hand, again, where he has to realize Tony G does not want to oh. play a big pot oh. with me. And if you're going to play the hand, put pressure. Raise or fold. Yeah, there's 30,000 in there right now. And even though Dykoff has the better hand advantage, Tony right. G? I, uh, yes, but I don't. Uh, Tony G has position, so that makes up for a lot. They both missed this wide. Yes, but see, this is why position is so important. Most flops miss most players, and now Tony G with position is probably going to win this pot, even though he has the worst hand. Check. Well, actually, it says that he has the best hand by percentages because he can make a flush where Dykoff can't. 12,000. Pass. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you see, it's just too hard to take off flops with eight high and try and make a hand. So you either have to make a play before the flop or get rid of it. Dykoff counting up the chips, seeing how far behind he is. And Tony G just stacking. Like the parapets, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very tall. It is really tall. You know, I was standing in the keep uh, in Cardiff yesterday. And uh, it it felt about as high as uh, what Tony G stack <laughs> must feel to uh, dike off yeah. looking you across at sometimes. Not easy to you topple. Raise every time just because I raise. Look at this. Tony is talking right into dike off. He's got an right. ace. He has to raise. Oh, raise. 15,000. You know, if his chip position wasn't more. advantage Tony enough, now he's trying to win the psychological warfare as well. He did no, say he said raise 15. Tony G 15, with the hooks, pocket say. jacks. Uh, 15, okay. Total. Yeah, there's a question 15, here right now, Kenna, about whether or not Dykoff was saying raise so of or raise I'm to. And uh, raise but with the in. jacks, it may be completely immaterial. It may be, because I think Dykoff is going to call here with ace high. If he does not call here, even though it would be a great fold, Pass. and he does. Wow. wow. Okay, now this is very Last interesting. Week. Because Dykoff, you, got hand. you know... <laughs> You got a hand. I got a hand. Oh, he yeah. read Tony G. He sure did. Huh? Sometimes it's not this good kid's enough. got Usually some play in him. He sure does. You know, it's reading seventy percent. Reading your you opponents is lose. such a key to this game. And Dykoff just win. read Tony G perfectly. It's kind of like in the in the movie um, Rounders, right, where he looks <laughs> over and he box. says, "You want the cookie?" Play the percentages. Right? <laughs> it's great to see a second dimension brought out of a Please player. That's right. He's seen him open the cookie. <laughs> I want to play his king of hand. That's gonna, that is gonna shake Tony G's well confidence a lot. He thought he was nailed on to get that money on. He sure did, he sure did. Although it's hard to erode somebody's confidence when they you have <laughs> the well parapets. Yeah, I may have Stacked been a little strong there. Not great, it just does well. It's a really nice, nice like return on investment. <clears throat> I'm not here to rob you, that's for sure. <laughs> Tony G now is, is forcing the psychological warfare on him, saying every time I bet, I have I have a hand, I have the best hand. He's applauding his laydowns because he doesn't want his opponent to take a stand against him. He wants to slowly just whittle him away, you know, chop off one toe at a time, so to speak, right? Until the blood just runs out of him and he falls <laughs> over and he carries the carcass told. away. <laughs> well, surely the king six is enough for Dykoff. He thinks so too. And has raised 25,000 on the back of it. Right. Tony G now with the pocket back? pair. It, all is you all know. he's deciding is whether to move all in here or see a flop and then and then uh, make his play. 
I think the wise play here is to see the flop first because his opponent has got to be at the point where he's going to gamble. So Tony can give himself a 2-1 to one advantage here by seeing the flop and then betting. No matter what. No matter what comes. And forcing his opponent off the hand, which is what he does. Now I expect Tony G to steal position here and bet no matter what flops. I'm willing. Wow, See, you called this it, This is Kenna. a perfect <laughs> play by Mr. Tony G. It's the reason, one of the reasons why he's the best. One of the best here, anyway. I mean, Tony okay, again. Wow. Kids asking him. Mm-hmm. Tony G. He trying. says top pair again. He doesn't have top pair, but any pair is good. And Tony G. plays this hand, hand this to TV perfection. I had one of those hands that if, you, if I raise you or go all in, you've got a call. 530,000. Tony finding right a way to win that right hand without play. making it a straight it. raise. I had the best hand. Mm -hmm. so it wasn't a problem about it. Full three I had. Very difficult position that Kevin Dykster is in. Uh, you know, How do I me? Dyke off, <laughs> rather, not Dykster. <laughs> what did you have? Dyke off. Kingsby. Uh, Kingsby, yeah. That's you know, I feel for the kid because I've been in this position. I don't want to look bad on TV. When I go in, I want to make sure <laughs> I have the best hand. I, you know? I, think, he's, I think he's handled himself <laughs> yeah, very well. I mean, early on, I you know, when they were six, five, and four-handed, Dykoff did make a couple moves, a couple plays. It's quite a good poker. But uh, it's, like it's it. just slipped away so quick. The worst hand is a fall the whole time. Yeah, I mean, he's really... Changed his colors from opening up this tournament with Jack Eight under the gun to throwing Tony. away King High Tony. heads up. Like off call. chips in first. Call. Quick call from Tony Ace G. High this time. Yep. He's got the Queen B. Mm. What's that? But uh, this is not a terrible not spot for Dykoff to be in. No, it's not three to two, okay, you know, and uh, if he doubles up here, maybe he'll gain some confidence and start uh, moving his chips around. Uh, too short, six. Oh, you got to play that. That's a nice hand. <laughs> <laughs> Tony G once again Ace encouraging his opponent so that when he goes away, he's just not totally shattered. Still fine. There's 90,000 out there, but G has a pair. Dykoff needs a queen or seven, or this one's yeah, over. Looking for a queen or a seven on the turn. It's there a jack. Two spades Ooh, on board. Yeah, yeah he does that's pick up the flush that's draw that's there, Jesse. So now a spade, a queen, or a seven will let him survive and double up he's as no, we go to the river. He's no worse than two to one against. One card to decide that fickle fate. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> and Tony G's the <laughs> champion. He's thrown to the semifinals, Kenna. Uh, with the well saying, well I think you'll, you'll do things. really well. You'll do right. really well. I couldn't yes. have said First it better times. myself. Tony G. <laughs> Telling Kevin Dykoff he did very well for his first time playing on TV. Oh, after that, I think he's have a right. Drink. It was a nice performance okay, by Dykoff, but he just ran into a buzzsaw here. Bye. He sure did, and that buzzsaw is named Tony G. And Tony G, uh, you know, a class act, a gentleman, you know, and he won with grace. What an exhibition of Texas Holden from Tony G tonight. On paper, this table looked like a tough proposition, but for Tony G, it looked like a walk in the park, and he never even paused for breath. He's our second player into the semifinals. Our winner, Tony G, dominating fierce. Tony, some days you make it look so easy. What, what's your secret? <laughs> There's no secret. I was playing a couple of days ago and I couldn't get a hand together. You know, it's like just luck, you know, just good cards, good situations. Is that what the marks on your face are for being hit by the deck? <laughs> yeah. You're sorry, no, just kidding. No, no, you have all my respect, you know, but the key hand had to be when you had the king 10 against the ace queen. Now, I have to ask you, what were you thinking, okay, when you raised it and you got re-raised by David and you decided to make the call with the king 10? Did you have a pre-plan when you made that call before the flop or what were you trying to do with that hand? Usually, if, if you sort of, when I play a big pot, I want to win that pot. Uh, David sort of got very aggressive, and uh, I, just, I don't like it. I take it personally. I got <laughs> right. offended by him a few times, and I, I let him keep those pots. Right. I just felt the timing was there this time. I'm going to make a stand. Right. Uh, Sometimes you have to take a stand and draw a line in the sand, no matter what your hand is, and you know, and mark your territory. I think you do that as well as anybody. Yeah, it's either him. I mean, I saw he was getting very aggressive and very dangerous for me to handle him, and he got more and more chips. And I to win, I have to win the heat. So there's all extra risk I can take. Mm -hmm. The flop I had outs to the nuts. Um, right, right. Whenever in that situation, he ch quickly checked it. I don't hesitate there. I mean, I quickly bet it. You know, sometimes I can have three aces there. I right, can have. Right. 
It just the way I play. Right. Well, in fairness to you, you quickly bet, you know, when he had a hand as well, he threw the $10,000 chips in like they were chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop. Well, I mean, when you got head up, Tony, obviously you were in a very dominating position, but you know it can slip away from there. What, what was your strategy? Just keep the pressure on Slipped him. away before, and yeah. I, I want to talk the guy into losing this match, and it has done really well. Wow. No risks. He slowly gave the chips away, and then we had to play with one pot all in. Right. And it uh, worked out perfect. I mean, that situation was... Wow. Yeah, you amputated him one limb at a time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, the other players in the semis better watch out. Tony G is in the mix. Join us next week when Ian Fraser and Ken Leonard are on tap here.